G'day guys, Sparky Dave here. So we've got Echoe, I'm in a small room. We're gonna be throwing a towel rail on the wall here in the laundry. First thing we're gonna talk about are the tools that you'll need to do the job. So here I've got my basic hand tools, pretty much used for everything. What you'll need off this is probably a square drive and a flathead, maybe a pair of pliers. We've got a tape measure here if we need that. Drill and impact driver. Uh, we've got some sturdy wall fixings here. If we can't find studs, we've got a long level, pencil and eraser, and a couple of drill bits. So I've got a six mil and a 12.5, and then some spare screws. First thing we're gonna do here is account for a washing machine going in here. Now this washing machine is 600 wide. So we're gonna put a wee pencil mark here at 600. And then what I've done is put one at 610 as well. So once we've got these marks, we're gonna use the outside one just to give it a little bit of wiggle room for the washing machine. And then we're gonna center it between this mark and the outside face edge of that socket. So we'll throw our tape measure in there. We can see that our mark is 720. So we'll go 360 and put a wee mark on the wall there. And that there's gonna be the center point of our towel rail to have it central to this area here. The next thing you want to do is unbox the towel rail and assemble the feet on it. This towel rail, we're gonna have recessed wiring on it. So the wiring is actually gonna run through the wall and in behind the switch. Now, as you can see, we've got five legs. So one of these legs in this particular model of towel rails will be designed to have the cable run through it. You anyway, know, we're looking for this foot here. Now this is the one that the cable runs through. Well, 12 and a half mils, not quite big enough, maybe a 14 mil bit, but we can just drill it out and just slightly burr around the edges of the hole to make it big enough to slot this into the wall with. Sometimes, if you hit fix in with these, you can drill it out, shove it in, cut a wee chase, only partially out of these, because you don't want it to be flimsy at all, and have the cable run on an angle. You'll be able to drill it on a slight angle and the cable's small enough to fit through. Now, unfortunately, because we weren't in here sooner, before the previous electrician did his thing. We have no cable in the wall whatsoever as a draw cable, which you would generally put in in a new build. So what we'll do instead is we'll have the powered leg at the top of the towel rail. And of course, it may look unsightly with an Allen key sticking out the top. We'll try and work around that as best as possible. There should be an Allen key provided with each towel rail. Here we go. So the first thing we'll do is take these wall fixing mounts out, pop an Allen key in there, untwist it a bit, and they'll pop out. So the next thing we're gonna do is throw these feet onto the towel rail. The ones with these ends on them, what you've gotta do is put the screw through there and then screw into the towel rail. An easy way to do that is invert your screwdriver, place the screw on top, and then place that on carefully. Just like that. And then you can screw this on. Make sure that these Allen key parts are facing downwards from the way you're gonna have the towel rail. So this screw here is just gonna screw straight into the hot threaded hole. Now you wanna tighten them up. Don't over tighten them, but nice and firm. So it's not gonna move when you apply a bit of force to it. You wanna eye it up and just make sure it's straight on as possible. When you line up with the wall later, you'll be able to see if they're a bit wonky and straighten them up. We'll be using this side here, throw a cable onto when it's on the wall. So we'll take that cap off. The other end, the cap stays on. It looks like these ones here, they've actually designed with threads in the bottom, so you can actually put them upside down. A lot of the time with these tower rails, they can't go upside down, so that's great. We don't actually have to have the Allen key sticking up at the top to have the cable at the top. We do have a sticker on top here, which will be visible through that wee hole. So we'll rip her off. Now on this side here, we'll put both screws in. So one goes in the top, one goes in the bottom. On this one here, we just put one on the bottom because that one we'll need to take off so we can fit the cable in later. Righto guys, now that that one's done, I've got to lean it against the wall here. If you are gonna lean it against the wall, don't lean it on these sharp edges of the feet. Lean it on the nice smooth surfaces at the top um, and make sure, I mean, this wall's not painted yet as you can probably see. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure halfway on this tail rail ladder so we can line it up the middle point on here when we face it against the wall. Tail rail is 500, so 250 right there. 
I don't know if you can see that mark, but I can see it quite well. So make sure you have your pencil on you, clear all the crap off the floor. Now the next thing we're going to do is line this up with the wall. I'm going to need to get in the way of the camera a wee bit. This is by what far the fastest way to do it. Throw a nice level across the feet. Line your centre points up with whatever height you're having the towel rail. Just check the cupboard doors and drawers don't open up onto the towel rail like that. Cupboard door's fine, it's away from the towel rail. Make sure it's level. And all you'll need to do is do a small semicircle around the top of the feet of each foot. Be careful not to move the towel rail at all while you're doing this. Sometimes it helps to have a second person. As you can see a slightly slip there. Line it back up perfectly and keep going. That's done. The next thing I do is check for studs. There's nothing behind that one. Same as that one. It's definitely fixing behind there, and same as that one. You want at least two points of fixing for a towel rail, preferably at the top, but of course one of these top ones is going to end up being a cable. Next thing I do is get a small screwdriver, terminal driver, grab one of the feet, and these feet are going to get mounted on the wall. I put the screwdriver through the center and pierce a hole in the jib here. Now you can see I've got a wee semicircle here, I've got an almost full circle here, so I'll demonstrate on this one. With these feet, this is going to sit inside. It's going to be pushed up against the top of the inside of each leg by the wee grub screw at the bottom. So what you're going to want to do is line it up, not centre to these holes, but offset towards the top and central to the sides. Just like so, I hope you can see. So we have it offset towards the top. I'm going to poke my screwdriver through, just like that. So you can see that this is closer to the top than the bottom, and that counts for that wee grub screw pushing in. When you take it out, you'll see the centre hole is slightly off-centred. So repeat that for all four. What I've found actually is this top one here isn't quite into fixing. So the next thing I'm going to do is make the holes that were into jib much bigger, so bring it down through the tip of the screwdriver and over this. You can also use, say, a 6mm drill bit and just drill them out to centre if you want. This way I find is much faster and easier. And just like that. So for these other two on this side, we're going to put these large jib anchors in. Now these jib anchors can hold a significant amount of weight. So what we're going to do is fire these on the inside. To do that you shove them in the hole, get your impact driver, screw it right up and it will pull itself towards you and flare it out. I'll actually do one on camera. Basically what happens is you screw these up tight and then you keep going and these bend outwards on the inside of the jib and this here compresses right in so that ends up being a sizable biscuit behind the jib. Say so fire it in. It's best to use an impact driver but once you get it going it's really easy to screw up and then when it starts getting tight simply unscrew it and you're left with a solid anchor in the wall and then this here with the washer and it should just slide into these. So with this we then just screw it onto the wall. Crank it up a wee bit and that's firm as. What you want to do next for each one is rub out that pencil line as you go. Now I'll do the same for this one. The other two are going to be a wee bit different. So the one we're fixing over there, simply going to chuck an inch and a half bit on my impact driver. And there we go. Sweet, so now that those three are on the wall and they're nice and secure, what we're going to do is drill this hole out substantially bigger so we can fit the wee cable piece into the wall there. Still not big enough. So I want to evenly go round on all sides with this drill bit and just make it slightly bigger. This is probably 13 and a half, 14 mil 
So if you had one of those drill bits, obviously use that instead to make it perfect. But otherwise, we can just carefully burr it out a wee bit. The jib's easy to burr out. Don't go too rough on it. Still not quite big enough. Much better. So that there is going to fit in that hole perfectly. Next thing I'm going to do, because this is recessed, is remove the socket from the wall. We're live at 240 volt. So what we'll do now is we'll go down to the switchboard and ensure that we de live in the circuit. Here is the switchboard, it's pretty dark. What we're going to see is I'm going to hope that these sockets aren't on these ones. Because those circuits in the bathroom look new, I'm going to assume the previous electrician has put them on this RCD. So we will test that one. This one has killed the circuit. Always make sure you prove, test and prove. So that's great that the socket, this tower I was going to run off, is on an RCD because that was the next point I was going to get to. Ensure that every single tower rail you install is off an RCD circuit, no matter what. If you're going there to throw a tower rail on an old circuit, don't do it without putting an RCD on it. So now we've got this off the wall. Once again, we'll test to ensure it's dead. Make sure you go ahead and prove this is working first before you test the socket. The next thing to do is cut this plug end off the appliance. This end here will be plugged into the towel rail. We don't need this on it. This is for when the cable is exposed and that wee grommet, plastic grommet, sits in the metal to make sure the metal doesn't dig into the cable. So we remove that and now we'll slide this on. Remembering it's going to poke into the wall that way. So the cable's going to poke in from the face of it first. And so that is what the end's going to look like when it sticks out of the wall. Now with this other end, we're going to poke into that hole that we've made over here and hopefully fish it out into the flush box here. I can feel that there is timber in there. I'm going to take this flush box out first. Now that flush box is right out of the way. I can actually see there's a cable running straight through the timber here. So what I might be able to do is fish the cable straight through it. What you may need to do is send a hook down this way try and get to the cable. What I've got here is a black piece of catenary wire. This here is long enough to get in and fish that cable out. Remembering there is a stud here. So what we want to do is hook the cable and wiggle it around. And just like that, we pull it through. Tidy up those wee bits of paint so they don't sit outside the the leg when it's installed and press the solid lead part in. The next part we're going to do is actually place the towel rail on the wall and then we're going to fit this off last. Sweet. So the first thing we're going to do is take this leg back off the towel rail and that there is the connection point. Pull it out a wee bit, slide the leg and make sure it's the correct end that goes on first onto the cable. Slot the cable into the towel rail, and then screw this part onto it. Slide the leg back on. Sweet, so now that's back on, pull that cable back through the wall, plug that part back into the jib, slide all of the legs on. Make sure when you're doing the legs up, you're not marking the paintwork with the Allen key. So what we have here is a nice, firm, sturdy towel rail on the wall. With respect to the one with the cable going through, does move slightly, but it is very firm regardless. For connecting it, I will simply be running this cable off the one terminal and wiring the neutral nurses together. I'll be doing that off camera. And of course the final bit, make sure it's level. All right guys, so we're live now. Got our switch turned on. If you've got time, you can wait around for the heated towel rail to heat up. If you haven't got time, you can throw your clamp meter around the cable 
and see how much current it's drawing. Won't be drawing much because it is a tail rail. They do start to warm up pretty quickly though. The other thing is uh, I recommend that you verify that the RCD is working on the circuit. So I'll go through with the multifunction tester and ensure the RCD on the circuit is working properly. Last thing, make sure you vacuum up. These Makita vacuums are great for doing that. Just make sure that the end of the vacuum, the plastic part, doesn't scratch along the side of the timber. It's getting nice and warm now. Another thing, door opens fine all the way. I mean, obviously not by the handle the whole way. And plenty of room for the washing machine, which will be coming out to about here. So I think we've done well where we've positioned this. It's at a nice height. I mean, you could go a bit higher, but it would start looking silly with the window being the height it is. Awesome. All right, thanks for watching, guys.